So today we are having Camp Diamond back. It is uh, like a, a morning session for our new sixth graders coming in. Um, they can sign up in the in the spring, and once they sign up, they come in. They have a morning full of meeting other students that are going to be sixth graders. They do a lot of fun activities. They get to practice a locker combination, which is a, a big stressor for a lot of them. So having that practice beforehand is really good. Um, they get to talk about their schedule and their classes, and they get to meet some of their teachers, which is really important to start building those relationships. Uh, one, two, three, and four are your core classes. Your core classes being math, language arts, and science social studies. Okay, you guys know where the art room is? That way. It's upstairs, so let's go ahead and head upstairs. That's upstairs. Yeah. Now look at your schedule. Do you see art anywhere in any of your schedules? Uh, no. Yes. It might not be at the top. It could be further down. Oh, yeah. This is compost. So this is the food, any leftover food. So you want to dump that out before putting your paper plate in here. Um, well, I, I, I know what I need to do every time I play Capture the Flag. Um, I'm learning how to open a locker. I try to do what they tell me to do. I, I don't know. But it just won't open. How to unlock my locker is really hard. And making new friends is easy. Helps to relieve some of that anxiety for the first day of school. If they already have an idea of some of the staff members and who they feel comfortable talking to, knowing where some of their classes are, it, it really decreases the stress that day and makes it a lot easier. So you start with Mauer. That's two, two, three. Does anyone start at two twenty two? It really helps to build that relationship and knowing that they can trust you, um, and especially you know if there's a conflict with with a couple of students, knowing that hey, I feel comfortable going to that staff member and letting them know what's going on, um, puts a lot of trust in us and um, helps make our days easier here here at Oz. This meeting of the Lincoln Board of Education for July 30th, 2019 is called to order. Laura, would you please call the roll? Ms. Byer. Ms. Byer is excused. Mr. Boswell. Present. Mrs. Danik. Here. Mrs. Duncan. Mrs. Duncan is excused. Mr. Mayhew. Present. Ms. Mumgard. Ms. Mumgard is excused. Dr. Rauner. Present. Thank you. We have a quorum. The Nebraska Open Meetings Act is posted and available at the entrance of the room. We have minutes from our work session on June 25th, our regular meeting on June 25th, and our budget forum on June 27th for approval. Are there any additions or corrections? Seeing none, the minutes stand approved as published. Tonight, for special reports, presentations, and celebrations of success, we have a student celebration Middle school students earn high school credit at the Career Academy Summer Program. For many years, LPS has provided students who attend Title Middle Schools the opportunity to earn high school credit the summer before their freshman year. Tonight, we'll hear about the second year this opportunity has been extended at the Career Academy, and we'll start with Linda Hicks, Director of Federal Programs. Good evening. Um, we have some students that are anxious to tell you about their, exper about their experience. Um, but the program at um, TCA is an expansion of what we've done at other, uh, for other Title Middle School students in the past. Um, students are selected by their principals and counselors as those most likely to benefit. And they follow the same six-week, half-day um, summer schedule that the students at North Star follow. Um, the difference for our program at the Title Schools is that a high school teacher comes to the, the middle school for the first three weeks and then the students and teachers move together to the high school so it's really a great transition there um, they can learn where their school is they know one teacher well before they even start school um, this is year two of the program at the Career Academy. We piloted it last year and um, it went well, so we want to continue to offer that. Um, through some blended funding, uh, we include title funds, um, a Woods grant, and our Native American demonstration grant. We were able to expand participation to some students who do not attend title schools as well. And um, they had a great experience this year, um, worked with culinary foundations, intro to engineering design, 
design and robotics engineering math one so had had some great experiences and you'll hear more about that in just a moment our purpose is real in offering and adding TCA to this opportunity is to encourage students to consider TCA as an option later in their high school journey so with us tonight, um, Josh Jones is the coordinator at the Career Academy during the school year, and he was also our summer school coordinator for this program. So he'll be up next. Thank you, Linda. Uh, we had a great group this year. Uh, two years ago, we started this pilot. We had 32 students. We were up 22 this year to 60 students. As Linda said, we had students taking classes in IED or REM for two hours out of the day, and then the other two hours they took culinary foundations. And it's a great opportunity for incoming freshmen to kind of jumpstart their high school career in classes that typically freshmen don't get to take when they start as, a, as freshmen. And it's also a way to start thinking about themselves in a potential career or a college fit. Uh, students like Tegan and Naomi in a second are going to be able to tell you about their opportunities in robotics, which they may never have had that opportunity uh, without this. So we're, we were thrilled to have it. We offered breakfast and lunch. We had, um, again, we started with 63 students and we only lost three along the way. And I think that's a testament of what our program offered kids this summer was a, was a rigorous program, a fun program, and a great way to jumpstart that high school career. So I'm going to have Julie Loki come up. Julie was our culinary foundations teacher. She was uh, unique in that she got to touch all of our students. She was the one teacher that worked with all 60 of our students, and she'll be able to tell you a little bit about her experience. Again, it was a great program. Um, I had students there that normally wouldn't take culinary foundations, which is what I taught. And, you know, it was so much fun to watch them experience some things that they had never experienced. I had one student that, you know, swore he couldn't flip a pancake to save his life. And so, you know, I was standing there cheering him on, and, and he flipped it, and he says, this is the best day ever, you know? And, you know, well, you just love that as a teacher. Um, so they went from, you know, something as simple as flipping a pancake to making homemade chicken noodle soup, which you might hear a little bit more about as well. We had a great time collaborating with the, one of the engineering, the engineering design class. They made cookie cutters from do the um, 3D printer, and then they brought the cookie cutters to our class. We did a roll-out sugar cookie, and actually we had a decorating contest with that as well. But they actually got to experience and evaluate their cookie cutters did it work or didn't it work? And you know how could they have improved it? So that was a great, a great way to you know apply what they had learned. Um, my favorite things again were watching students try new things, um, cutting apart a raw chicken, a lot of oohs and icks and, and those kinds of things, or making homemade noodles and thinking, wow, you know you don't just buy them in the store in a bag. You can actually make them. Uh, also working with a student that was gluten sensitive and trying to figure out you know, recipes that would work. We did a lot of baking, and so there would have been a lot of wheat flour that he wouldn't have been able to, to use. So combining other ingredients to come up with, with things that were not only acceptable to him, but were acceptable to students that weren't gluten, didn't need to have gluten-free, and asking for that information. So um, like I, he said, like Mr. Jones said, I worked with all of the students for the, the four hours that we were there. Two students that really stood out to me and that I've recommended to come this evening were Tegan Gunning and Naomi Molina. And I'll have them come up now. Okay, um, my name is Tegan and I'm here with my mother. Um, I am going to, I got out of Irving this year and I'm going to Lincoln High with the IB program there. I really, I first learned about summer school by my principal, and as soon as I learned about it, I was like, this is great, because I really like to learn, and I'm like, I get to learn over the summer even better. And I originally took robotics just to get my technology requirement done, but then I found out that I really, really love to code, and that's something that I didn't know before that, and so because of that, I've been able to explore coding, and I got to build a lot of things, and really learn more about robots and like things like that. Um, I also really enjoy culinary foundations, I cook a lot for my mother now, at least a lot more than I used to. I have a lot of fun doing that actually, and I bake a lot too. I've made brownies <coughs> for my neighbors and cookies for the 4th of July and stuff like that. And I, all the teachers were so nice, and I made so many new friendships that I wouldn't have had, and people I wouldn't have met. So now I know people that are going to the same high school as me, and people who aren't, and just it was a really great experience overall. 
Hi, I'm Naomi. I'm here with my mom and dad. Um, I'm coming from Leffler and moving into Southeast. Um, TCA was an absolutely amazing experience. From the ex instructors to the curriculums, I had learned so much in those six weeks and I honestly miss it. I personally couldn't have chose a better way to spend my summer. I had met some wonderful people that made me excited for my education each day and I'm genuinely thankful I made the choice to go. Originally, I had wanted to go just for the credits in my high school career, but after about two days, I had realized just how lucky I was to be given all of this information, and I get to keep all of the great friends and memories, too. I will definitely be reapplying as soon as I'm able to go. My brother went to TCA first in my family, and now my stepsister attends there, and both have had fantastic experiences. I'm so glad I got to get involved with TCA so early on, and it gives me more to anticipate for my future education. The courses were so great because of their friendly environments and kind teachers and instructors. It feels as if every adult involved wants to make you feel accepted and safe to express yourself. It's an extremely student-friendly environment and so welcoming. Nearly every single day of the week, the principal would wait at the door and greet us, saying good morning. Although it was a small gesture, I, along with many others, appreciated it. It was always exciting when we got to take part in fun competitions such as cookie decorating and robot racing. Through every bit, our personalities were allowed to shine through, such as how those in engineering got to make cookie cutters to personalize their cookies. In robotics, although things became a bit tough, we were always given the extra push we needed. In culinary, we were assigned to groups to get out of our comfort zone. Through this, almost everyone got along. Moving from the topic of teachers, another group of people who helped a ton were the bus drivers. They were very sweet and always had time for a good conversation. Both ladies I had each day were polite and very funny. They helped form new friendships as well. In culinary, we learned so much, such as how to properly fabricate a chicken, know the difference between washing and sanitizing, and even how to go about being sick when working in a kitchen. All the lessons we learned were valuable and definitely helped make some good food. One lesson we learned in every single class on many occasions was, if you make a mistake, don't linger on it. Rather, learn from it and make it better. It's very important to continue to keep that in mind for all of my life. We learned a lot about the world in just a couple of hours per day. TCA is such a great experience and there's so many things that we did that make it so fun, especially the freedom. It's so nice to feel so relaxed in a learning environment. Every so often days would get strict, but it wasn't a lot as long as you follow the rules set in place. The instructors are people you can tell just about anything and trust them very easily. They always have time for a joke or some small talk. Everyone at TCA is treated equally, no matter what circumstances. In so few weeks, we were taught so much, and we had fun being taught. One thing I really liked is that we get to keep our recipe lab plans and get to make them at home. At all times, you have the opportunity to make up missing work and or bring your grade up. Early in the beginning, I missed a day because of sickness, but the next day, I was given wor my worksheets and a PowerPoint online to catch up with the rest of my class. Through this, we were all... <laughs> informed properly and efficiently. TCA was the best school experience I've had in a while and I truly appreciate the chance I was given and took to have fun and to get good information. All in all, I'd like to t thank TCA for such a great summer and I'd do it again if I could. They truly helped me feel so comfortable and safe just by the first day. TCA was such a great impact on students and get gets us ready for the future. I'm so thankful to the school and all of the teachers for a great time. That was very well said. Um, but before you sit down, I was wondering if my colleagues have any questions here. Bob, I saw you. Well, I have a question to the students because I still remember the first time my oldest daughter went from Leffler to Southeast High School and she was a bit intimidated. And I was too because I graduated from high school with 19 kids in my class and so I thought, geez, Southeast is huge. So how much did it help having that transition where you got to go over for part of it? I think that it's really helpful because I've met a couple people going into Southeast, so I know that I have at least a group to stay with because a lot of my friends are going to a different high school, so knowing that I have that set group that I can hang out with and know I can rely on through TCA is absolutely amazing. Other questions? Oh, Kathy? No? Great Don? job. I, don't, I didn't have a question for the students, but I do have a Linda question. Were you going to talk okay. some more? Yeah, do you want to stay? Okay. I actually have one, one student question before you sit down. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm really curious, when do you first remember thinking about what career you might want to go into after, after school? 
And how did how did this experience impact that? It's kind of complicated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest because I think we both know like the basic what we want to go into but I don't think either of us are a hundred percent sure but the robotics thing okay well um I guess like I've always been interested in like medical science and stuff like that and so I didn't like a lot of the stuff bless you sorry a lot of the <laughs> stuff really like uh, I guess it wasn't really similar to my career path, but I did definitely find a lot of like coding is so is like very useful information. Like you can use it to build a website, to share your ideas. Like it, like coding created electronics, and electronics are a big part of our society today. And so I think having both of us having the REM experience really does help with that, though, because there is so much that is focused around technology. Today. Little known fact, software engineers are the coolest people. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that. Don, I'll let you ask your question. Um, I think that this program is neat on its own, has uh, intrinsic value. I think I heard both students say something to the effect of that they were there to get some credit requirements knocked out and then found out that they really liked what they were doing. Uh, I think that uh, an added benefit is giving students um, exposure to the Career Academy itself, and I'm wondering, at the end of the term, are we getting any information back from the students if they would be inclined to attend the Career Academy uh, for, for part of the high school experience? Mm -hmm. And Josh, do you know, as far as that yeah, I, I, survey you, information from students? Yeah, we did surveys the mm -hmm. first year and have surveys for this year that we have submitted to Lindsay, mm -hmm. the Title I, so. Um, and then we will be able to track those students then the last year's group will be applying this year potentially, and then this group will apply in a year. So we'll get that that information here fairly soon. So in general terms, then, what is the interest level in coming back to the Career Academy? I would say it's about 75%. Mm -hmm. that, um, the students don't know what they don't know still, and that's that's the hard part is that, um, like, for these two young ladies, they're, they're pretty pretty articulate, pretty articulate young ladies, and um, not everybody's able to, to articulate their, their future plans quite like them, and, and plans change so, so much. So we would hope that that 75% would, would jump up, and, and we would be that right fit for, for, those, for, the, for the right student. So Things are going to change. I was just trying to get a sense of their interest level at the end of the, of the term, and it sounds like it's pretty high. Yeah, I think it is. I think students really like the space as well. I think they like learning in that space. It just it doesn't feel like the traditional high school space or the middle school that they're used to coming to, and it's just more open and a little bit more free. And um, I think they enjoy that that learning environment. Neat. Thank you. So. Thank you. Well, I see great high school experiences ahead for both of you. So thanks for being here. I would just like to recognize um, both Dan Hohensee and Takako Olson who helped in the planning and making this possible for this summer. Thank you. Thank you so much. Our next item is a staff celebration featuring an award for Belmont Elementary School. Kathy. And before I go to the podium, I'm going to give you a little background here because this is a really special award for Lincoln Public Schools. The American Psychological Association and its Board of Educational Affairs has awarded Belmont Elementary School with the 2019 BEA Golden Sci Award. Belmont becomes only the seventh school in the country to win this honor. Previous schools, previous winners include schools from Los Angeles, Dallas, and Florida. This award is open to all public and private schools from pre-K through 12th grade and recognizes schools that use evidence-based practices to affect student academic engagement and development and affect student social emotional engagement and development. Beth Dahl, Interim Director of the University of Nebraska Lincoln College of Education and Human Sciences and a board member for the American Psychological Association, BEA, has this to say about this award. In a competition dominated by coastal states, Belmont has proven that the Great Plains state of Nebraska does quality education well. Can I say that again? We do education well in Nebraska. And I want to say thank you for all that you do for the Lincoln community and congratulations. And with that, I'm going to ask Belmont's representatives to come up and then all of the teachers who came here or the staff members that came here are gonna come up and introduce themselves after I present this.
<laughs> and I'll let you two introduce yourselves. Okay. Good evening. I'm Kim Rosenthal, the principal at Belmont. And I'm Marnie Zabel, I'm the school psychologist at Belmont. And a former jazzercise friend of mine. There <laughs> yes. we go. Whereas um, Belmont Elementary School has been awarded the BEA Golden Psy Award for 2019 from the American Psychological Association and its Board of Educational Affairs, and whereas Belmont Elementary School has been recognized for fostering a supportive school environment for all students, and whereas Belmont Elementary School is a model for schools nationwide in adapting to the specific needs of students while ensuring high standards for all students, and whereas Belmont Elementary Schools uses the use of assessment tools in curricular planning is one way in which the school uses, utilizes psychological science. And whereas Belmont Elementary School also utilizes psychological science through measuring the impact of practices aimed at improving student outcome. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Lincoln Board of Education does hereby congratulate Belmont, El Belmont Elementary School for being awarded the BEA Golden PSI Award for 2019 from the American Psychological Association and its Board of Educational Affairs. This is signed by Board President Lanny Boswell and Superintendent Dr. Stephen Joel, and that is in the form of a motion. And congratulations you. to you all. Thank you. Um, on behalf of all of the staff at Belmont, who will we'll, we'll introduce themselves in a little bit, I would like to thank all of you for this recognition. This is really a recognition on the hard, with, for the hard work that all of our staff members do at Belmont. We have a very dedicated group of teachers, custodians, office staff members, paras, and it takes all of us working together to be able to achieve this. We strive to create an environment that considers the academic, the social, the emotional, and the behavioral needs of all of our students. And then we use a data-driven process to provide academic and behavioral interventions so that we can help meet those needs and we can work to get kids where they need to be. This award came about last fall when Beth Dahl approached Marnie, um, who's our school psychologist, and said, you know, there is this award and I know what Belmont does and I think you need to fill out the application paperwork to uh, apply for this award. And so Marnie put in a lot of time and we did a lot of synergy searches, thank goodness for synergy now, and we uh, filled out the paperwork. And then we received a phone call this spring that um, we were going to be recognized. And um, we had an opportunity this spring where Beth Dahl came out to present the award to us. And I just have to say, I can't be more proud of the staff at Belmont. Um, it really is due to their hard work and their dedication and their passion for making sure that our students have good experiences and that all means all at Belmont. So if I can have them come up and have them introduce themselves. Say your name and what you do. Say my name and what I do. Hi, I'm Sai Sattel and I'm one of two building coaches. Hello, I'm Heidi Smutney and I'm first grade team leader. I'm Samantha Baker and I teach second grade. I'm Brad Piper, I'm fifth grade gen ed. I am Christina Sweeney and I teach fourth grade at Belmont. I'm Annie McKeegan, I'm the fourth grade team leader. I'm Bobby Ehrlich and I'm the fifth grade team leader at Belmont. Okay. And, and thank you again. Thank you. <laughs> Well, congratulations again. Is there a second for Kathy's motion, Don? Second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, Laura, would you please call the roll on the motion to approve item 6.2? Mrs. Danning? Yes. Mr. Mayhew? Yes. Dr. Rauner? Yes. Mr. Boswell? Yes. Yeah, Kathy. I just want to say thanks to a whole bunch of teachers who showed up today. 
they're still on vacation for a couple more days. So thank you for being here. Not much longer. Thank you. Thank you so much. Our next item is public comment. Blue cards are available at the entrance for those wishing to speak. I do not have any blue cards tonight, uh, but if there's anyone wishing to speak to the board, please come forward now. All right, seeing none. Our next item is the consent agenda. Are there any items to be removed from the consent agenda tonight? Seeing none, is there a motion for approval? Kathy. I would move approval of the consent agenda items 8.1 human resources, 8.2 routine business, 8.3 option enrollment student applications, and 8.4 uh, late request for enrollment op option out for 2019-20. Thank you. Is there a second? Don. Second. Is there any uh, questions, comments, or conflict statements? Seeing none, Laura, would you please call the roll on the consent agenda? Mr. Mayhew? Yes. Dr. Rauner? Yes. Mrs. Danning? Yes. Mr. Boswell? Yes. For first reading tonight from the Planning and Transportation Committee, we have item 9.1.1, policy 3770, LPS Safe Pupil Transportation Plan. Don. Uh, this is coming to me as Chair of Planning, and I'm going to uh, turn it right over to Dr. Standish. Yes, before you, you have a revision of policy 3770. Um, this is in alignment, and oftentimes the revised language is taken straight from NDE rule. Um, we would like to have this in place for the start of the school year, which would mean if the board is comfortable, um, we would move it to action this evening. Um, you'll notice a few new required sections. We're required to have this in place, um, and that's the majority of the changes here, other than just updating some terminology. So we'd be happy to answer any questions board members have as they review um, this policy change. Thank you, Dr. Standish. Is there a motion for approval tonight? Don? I would move approval. Is there a second? Kathy? I would second that motion. Any discussion? I assume that means you said it, you need to set aside our yep. normal. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, it's been properly moved and seconded to waive our second reading and move this action and approve this item tonight. Seeing no further discussion, Laura, would you please call the roll on the motion to approve item 9.1.1. Dr. Rauner? Yes. Mr. Mayhew? Yes. Mrs. Danning? Yes. Mr. Boswell? Yes. From the superintendent tonight, we have item 9.2.1, transportation contract with first student, Dr. Standish. Um, yes, this is an annual event. Um, First Student has been a tremendous partner for the school district for the last several years by bringing in additional bus drivers to feel um, the need, and we're continuing to make progress. Um, we do anticipate using a very low number of drivers from First Student this fall. Um, that is, of course, a moving and flexing number each and every day. And so what we would like to have in place is the authority we've had in place in the past for up to 15 drivers. Um, and then Ryan works with Matt Bellamy, the director of purchasing, and they make adjustments to this throughout the year. So we're only truly using what we need. Um, it does cost almost twice as much to have the outside contractor, but part of that is because we're using the outside contractor also for such few need. Um, so we don't get a lot of scale. But this is something we would also like to have in place for the start of the school year. Um, so if we can sufficiently answer your questions, we would like to move it to action this evening. Okay. Is there a motion for approval on this item tonight? Kathy? Since I don't have any questions, I would move to set aside our normal uh, one, two reading uh, policy and move approval of item 9.2.1 contract with First Student Incorporated for student transportation. Is there a second? Don? A second. Okay. Uh, further discussion or questions? Kathy? I just have a question. Are we still uh, having issues trying to find enough transportation drivers? Yes, we take, we take applicants for the bus driver and bus pair position anytime, and there are bonuses in place. Um, so we would welcome anybody to come join that amazing profession. And can they apply online, or do they need to come to the district office and apply? Um, they could go to the district website. Okay, thank you. 
Any further questions or discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, Laura, would you please call the roll on the motion to approve item 9.2.1? Mrs. Danny? Yes. Mr. Mayhew? Yes. Dr. Browner? Yes. Mr. Boswell? Yes. On first reading tonight, also from the superintendent, we have item 9.2.2, .2, turf improvements at Den Hartog Field. Dr. Standish. Um, yes, this is coming to you on the heels of um, design services that we discussed last spring. And turfing of Hartog Field has been part of conversations in the school district for many years. And as part of that planning, um, there's been efforts made both through our depreciation fund and at our, our athletic funds to save up money for this venture. Um, we also have some other parties across the community who are willing to contribute to this project, so that is why special grant funds are also included. Um, those are changing and evolving and something we're still seeking, um, but we do think we have sufficient dollars dedicated from those revenue streams that are not general fund funded, um, that are appropriate for the project, to commence the project and begin getting this underway. This is a full synthetic turfing of the Hartog um, complex. And I know Scott Wieskamp can come up for detailed questions. This is something we would like to get in in the fall. So it is once again um, a potential if the board is comfortable for a request to waive second reading and move forward this evening. So I don't know if Mr. Wieskamp wants to come up and join if board members, I know many of you are on the planning committee and the planning committee did have an opportunity to review this proposal um, today at their meeting. Um, actually, Scott, if you could come forward while I get the motion, I believe I saw Don's hand on Yep, this. I was going to make a quick comment. I was just going to yep. uh, say what uh, Liz said that, uh, so that you know, Mr. President, uh, the planning committee, which is Kathy, Bob, and I met uh, just before this meeting, uh, we went through this in detail and uh, we were all comfortable with the idea of moving this uh, to action tonight. Uh, and so with that, I would like to move that we waive our normal practice and uh, move this item to action tonight. Is there a second? Bob. Okay, thank you. Uh, any discussion or questions? Could you just explain again for the community at large how this money came together so they don't think we're just spending money? Sure. The school district has um, an interscholastic athletic fund. Um, that is where things like proceeds from gates at, at games at Den Hartog would, would go into. Um, and through that process, our athletic department has been able to set aside um, enough to complete about half of the project. Um, we also annually save money for turf projects for the school district in our depreciation fund, which is basically the savings account for major purchases for the school district. Um, and turf would fall under that circumstance as well. Um, and then we have had some baseball organizations, other interested parties um, come forward with a desire to have this complex turfed, um, have this performance level field available to the city of Lincoln, and so we have some other parties that are coming to the table as well. Um, the depreciation fund does have sufficient money to complete the full project. Um, it, we're just going to try and find as many grant proceeds as we can. Thank you. Okay. Further discussion? Scott, I have a question for you. So um, a long time back, we talked about turfing <coughs> Seacrest Field and uh, how that field prior to turfing could only be used for a handful of events because of the time that you needed to have for recovery. Could you talk a little bit about the value of turfing a performance uh, field like this? Perfect question. You, know, you would think that we had planted that question, but I know it was not. So there's, there's two good reasons. This, this past spring was probably one great example where we had snow on the ground till late March, and actually spring practice begins early March, and our baseball teams were all practicing in the gymnasiums of their of their own high schools until game day, the very first game, which was usually around the third week of March. So they didn't have the opportunities that they would have if we would have had a turf field. So that's one example. The other, and I know um, Kathy would be willing to talk to this, but I think I can explain it. Um, we actually limit the number of games that our own teams can play because of the limited use of fields in the city. And we do partner with the city of Lincoln on other fields, but this is the only field that L LPS owns where varsity baseball can be played uh, on the fields that we own. And so it uh, gives more opportunities, it allows them to schedule more games because we actually play less games than what's allowed by the NSAA. 
I hope that that absolutely answers my question. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Any further questions? Thanks, Scott. Seeing none, Laura, would you please call the roll on the motion to approve item 9.2.2? Mr. Mayhew? Yes. Dr. Rauner? Yes. Mrs. Danning? Yes. Mr. Boswell? Yes. Thank you. We have two items from the Student Learning Committee tonight for second reading and recommended for actions. Those are items 10.1.1 and point two, policies 5110 and policy 5345. Um, Ms. Byer has been excused tonight. Uh, is there a motion for approval of these items? Kathy? If it's acceptable to my colleagues, I would lump them both together okay. since they both have to do with military recruiting and move for approval of policy 5110, and that's admission procedures, and policy 5345, military recruiters. Thank you. Is there a second? Bob, second. Okay, thank you. Um, Dr. Larson, is there anything that uh, from the Student Learning Committee that you'd like to share on this item? I would just remind everyone both of these policies are required by actions of the legislature this past session. 5110 is required by LB 115, and 5345 was required by 575. Thank you very much. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Laura, would you please call the roll on the motion to approve items 10.1.1 and point two? Dr. Rauner? Yes. Mr. Mayhew? Yes. Mrs. Danick? Yes. Mr. Boswell? Yes. Also on second reading tonight from the Planning Committee, we have item 10.1.3, Land Acquisition, Van Dorn Street Property. Is there a motion for approval? Don? Move approval. Is there a second? Kathy? I would second that motion. Is there, this item was discussed at our last meeting. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, Laura, would you please call the roll on the motion to approve item 10.1.3? Mr. Mayhew? Yes. Dr. Rauner? Yes. Mrs. Danning? Yes. Mr. Boswell? Yes. And on second reading tonight from the superintendent, we have item 10.2.1, the 2019-20 Board of Education and Superintendent Annual Goals and Priorities. Is there a motion for approval? Kathy? I would move approval of the Superintendent and Board Annual Goals and Priorities. Is there a second? Bob? Second. Thank you. Uh, so this item was discussed at our last meeting, and I also wanted to note that I had the opportunity to share these goals at LPS Leadership Day last week, and also that Dr. Joel and I will be meeting with the Lincoln Journal Star Editorial Board later in this week uh, to talk about these goals for the year. With that said, is there any further discussion? Seeing none, Laura, would you please call the roll on the motion to approve item 10.2.1? Mrs. Danning? Yes. Mr. Mayhew? Yes. Dr. Rauner? Yes. Mr. Boswell? Yes. That brings us down to informational items and reports. Are there any board committees wishing to report tonight? Seeing none, is there a report from the Career Academy? Yes, the uh, Career Academy met this morning and uh, there were two, largely uh, two things on the agenda. First, we talked about uh, numbers uh, and growth compared to last year and this year. Uh, it is possible that for this fall we could be looking at as much as 25% growth uh, in terms of the number of students. Most of those are juniors uh, with about 420 of them uh, potentially uh, coming in this fall. Uh, with 207 returning seniors, it's the biggest uh, group of uh, seniors coming in yet. And if current uh, retention rates hold from the last few years hold, that might project out to as many as 300 returning uh, seniors next year. So uh, the, uh, gr the growth is uh, continuing for the Career Academy as it continues to uh, increase its utilization, uh, which is good for students and good for the program. Uh, the other thing we discussed was insurance rates, uh, which are going up uh, slightly. Uh, partly as a response to the market and due to uh, flooding, it amounts to about a 1.5% increase. Uh, the staff uh, told us that that was in line with uh, increases in the past. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Don. Uh, you know, when I had our presentation earlier tonight with our uh, students visiting the Career Academy, I heard something for the first time, and that was, uh, well, my sibling went to the Career Academy. Yes. And I remember when we first started this, we talked a lot about how those enrollment numbers are driven by 
people the students had experience with, older siblings, friends, uh, and it's really neat to hear that and to see these numbers and to think about the conversations that are going on in families about, well, you know, your, your sister or your brother went to the Career Academy, maybe you should think about it too. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for the report. That brings us to the superintendent's update, Dr. Joel. Well, and no secret, we're a couple weeks away from school beginning. This summer has been another one of those quick and fast summers, but productive. And we're, uh, we're ready to get rolling. We've got two other items. Uh, the first one is, is not as much fun as the second one. So I'm going to call up the not as much fun people if I can, Mr. Langer, uh, Dr. Standish, and Dr. Weber. We're, we're going to be fun. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we want to give you a little bit of an update uh, on where we're at with our core project. We've talked about this uh, a number of times before, um, but it's almost moving in day, um, which translates to, um, in this case, that translates to 35 days before uh, we actually move in. Now, we've been moving the stuff in there, metaphorically speaking, for some time, um, but we're getting close to actually getting the people in there as well. And with, along with that, um, wanted to give you an update and um, give you a sense of just what it's like to try to move in uh, to a house that you, when you've lived in another one for as long as we have. So to that end, this is a diagram that just essentially shows um, where we were circa 1986. Uh, and for, uh, for Mr. Mayhew and Mr. Boswell, they can appreciate the, uh, the, the token ring four megabits per second, um, meaning that basically if you wanted to translate that now, that was what we had going at the district office. Now between our schools, we have about 2,500 times that bandwidth. Um, so things have definitely changed, and those green screens have definitely uh, gone the way of, of, of the dinosaurs. Um, and so by 2003, we really started to abstract um, the major pieces uh, of, the, of, the, of our uh, business system uh, and use what's called a service-oriented architecture and then start plugging things into it. And so this is what it looks like effectively today. Um, this is not by any means those uh, items that are in red, everything that's plugged into the system, but it gives you an idea of just how many different things are. And so when you decide to make a change like this, what you have to do is, is you have to unplug everything from the current system in a sense first for the purposes of then moving in that, that new system and moving it into place. Once you've got that in place, you can plug everything back in. Once you've plugged it all back in, then you get to start testing a lot of those, those places. Every, sing, every single place you see that red with the little triangle, we refer to that as an interface. It's some place that you have to be able to have data flowing back and forth. And so someplace like the Employee uh, Management Center and Employee uh, Center for Information, that listing of things out to the right are just a, is, is a listing of some of the things that we have built out over time that that environment does. And so as we move this forward, we're working like crazy to make sure that all of those things work just exactly as you would expect. But you know things like student teacher placement and notifications, it's a custom system that we built, uh, non-employees. You're like, well, what's with non-employees? Well, we onboard non-employees that are going to be working with us, it might be contractors uh, and so on. We do that as so for our data governance reasons. So um, with that in mind, what we anticipate is we anticipate some questions coming out when we go live. Because um, not everything is going to be perfect no matter how much we try. And so one might be, hey, I don't think I have the right access in Synergy. Um, you know, I can't see all the schools I serve. Those itinerants that are moving around, it's going to be, it is going to be a challenge for us to make sure that all of those data are being, are, are being, uh, getting exactly where they're supposed to. Or you might get something like this. Hey, I thought I was getting a student teacher. How am I supposed to check that? Because um, if that system hasn't been fully moved over, then that information won't be as much at the ready. And so, when we, when we roll this forward, we're getting into something like our electronic uh, data interchange where we're doing things where we're working actually to provide um, very quick access uh, for e-commerce. Places like School Specialty, Supply Works, Amazon, uh, and Office Depot, and probably Amazon and Office Depot most notably in that. Um, and so we're trying to get all of those plugged in, but one of the things we're, we find with this is it's not just on our schedule. It's on Amazon's schedule and Office Depot's schedule uh, as well. And you might say, well, why didn't you start a lot sooner? Um, similar to Mr. Wieskamp uh, with, with talking about the fact that we had a wet, we had a wet uh, spring uh, and, and, and winter, we've been working at this for really for quite some time, but you have to get to a certain point before you can actually start to plug these things in, and then you're subject to the time frames of other people that are partners of yours. And so we might get a question like, hey, can't the system even directly connect to Home Depot? Well, 
Um, it can, um, potentially, but right now we don't necessarily have that in place. And that should actually say Office Depot anyway, because um, we don't connect it directly to Home Depot. So at any rate, um, so that person would be wrong altogether to begin with. Um, but then the, the response, and we talked about this at, a, at Leadership Days, and we said, you know, what we're really hoping from leadership on this is, and, and I have every confidence um, that, that they're equal to the task, is just to provide that, hey, you know, yeah, I know they're working on it. Um, you know, it's rough for right now. You can do that in the, in the system like you do any other requisition. Um, it's going to get streamlined as we move forward. So that brings us to something like online benefits, for example. And in online benefits, it really gets complicated in ways that you wouldn't, you wouldn't maybe think right off. But we currently go out to a separate online benefits environment uh, with, a vent, with a vendor that we have partnered with. So in order to pull this off, we're going to use that same system here. That's going to be, we start doing on, uh, online benefits uh, in the month of August. But you can see what has to happen is we, we still have to be feeding that. And then at the very beginning of September, on September 3rd, we've got to be feeding the other system because you've got to know what all those benefits that they selected were so that you can do the proper deductions and so on. So if all of that magic doesn't happen precisely like we think that it should, we might get something, we, we encouraged all of our, our, we'll encourage all of our uh, employees, hey, remember when you're doing your online benefits, save that, you can save that last screen or that uh, PDF of that, so that if you have any concerns or whatever when the new system comes online, you can check your deductions, because the first time they're going to see that will be at the end of September, and it's the normal time they would anyway, but the point is, that's going to also be when we're on a brand new system. And so, you know, we anticipate that there could be uh, something like, hey, um, my paycheck's wrong. I don't think they're taking into account that, that my wife also teaches in the district. If you have a spouse uh, who works in the district, we make a special uh, uh, sort of, we give you a special deal. Uh, because since both of you are working, we provide an additional benefit for that. It's those kinds of special things that we do that go over and above that are going to be a challenge to make sure our, our calculating working exactly right. Um, and... We're encouraging to say, hey, you know, if, if you see something that's wrong, we absolutely want to know. Trust would verify, uh, absolutely. And we won't be the least, but we, we've got it. We can absolutely fix it. But just like when you're moving into a new house, not everything is exactly where it's going to be right when you get there. And so with that in mind, um, as we roll this forward, I would just share with you a, a little bit of a, a, little bit of a, a metaphor, if, if you will. I moved uh, along with my father and my brothers. We moved my grandmother several years ago from Michigan, about 700 miles. Moved all of her stuff here. You know, showed her the place in advance, all that sort of things. Got all of her stuff into, the, into her new apartment. And she was quite obviously visibly fretting uh, about this. And so I finally said, you know, well, Grandma, what, what's, you, you seem upset. And she said, well, it's, it's just, I, I've just mentioned that the, the cup dispenser several times. I mean, there isn't one in the, in the, in the, in the bathroom. I said, well, you know, we'll get the cup dispenser. I mean, we, we've got, I mean, we've got all this stuff. So finally, after this went on for a little bit, my dad, in a moment of a, a bit of exasperation, said, so, he said, so, none of this works without a cup dispenser? And my grandmother said, well, I know I think everything works with, without a cup dispenser, but I also think everything will work with a cup dispenser, too, um, which was just the right thing to say at that moment in time, but it didn't necessarily make my father that happy. But the point is, we have a lot of people that have cup dispensers, uh, so metaphorically speaking. We've been in the system that we have for over 30 years. And we've built a lot of those little, and it's hard telling what the thing is that makes the most difference to somebody, but we almost certainly are not going to have some of those cup dispensers in place on day one. So we wanted to provide that feedback to you so that as these types of questions or these, you might get these sorts of feedback, just know that we're absolutely aware, we're working on those things, and we're going to do everything we can to put those in place. So. The, the, the phrase that I have is, it, it may not have a paper cup dispenser in the first day, but we'll get everyone into the new place. And there's always that time when you're moving into a new place where you move something and you say, now that that's there, we're staying there. And that usually corresponds to things like, do we have towels and places to sleep and ways that we can prepare food? And once you have that, you sort of know, even if everything else isn't quite right, we're going to be there. We might have some of that when we kick this off, and I wanted to let you know that. Um, but that 35 days, we'll be working like uh, like like crazy uh, during that. And uh, I would be I would be uh, absolutely remiss if I didn't call out the incredible work that's been done by the team uh, that has been putting in 
countless hours uh, over the past several months. Um, we really kicked it up a notch once we had uh, some additional supports in place um, from our vendor. They've, they've come through and, and provided those, but it, we really have been working in a condensed and consolidated time frame. So we'd be happy to answer any questions uh, along with uh, uh, Dr. Standish and Dr. Weber. Kathy? Well, my first one is, there's a reason I've been in the same house since 1977, because I hate moving. One of the questions I have that has to do with benefits is, are we going to have some way to help employees know that they've been enrolled in benefits? Because I, there are penalties if they don't have health insurance. There are all kinds of things. So is all that going to be in place? And how are we coaxing them through and coaching them through the process? We send out, we send out reminders about benefits enrollment multiple times as we move into open enrollment. The other thing that we do is our um, benefits department, our, our people that work in benefits, if we see that people are not enrolling in benefits, we're reaching out to those buildings, reminding those principals, kind of that personal just, mm -hmm. hey, you've got some people in your building that haven't enrolled yet. Um, and then as we get close to the end of enrollment, we're really kind of going through a checklist of, okay, these, these names aren't accounted for. And so we will continue that pra practice again with this open enrollment. And how will all of that change within this new system? Well, actually this year, we're, we're using the same enrollment system that we've okay. used in the past, so it's just feeding into the new core system. Okay. So it's gonna look, it's gonna feel, and our processes are gonna be the same as they have in previous years. Thank you. And the second question is, how long did the AS400 serve this district? Um, it served uh, Sims since uh, 1986. So we got our money's worth out of that um, system. I think that, I think that we did. Yes. And this new system has capabilities that the AS400 does not have, correct? That, that's true. And I think one of the things to keep in mind is that any amount of what we do in, currently in paper processes will be changed and there'll be digital processes now. Um, so um, that also is just going to take some getting used to. You don't you don't handle that that you know that piece of paper like you do, did before. Maybe sign off on it, but you're going to sign off on it nevertheless by being in the system. Thank you. Other questions, Don. Uh, I don't have a question. I just had a couple of comments. First, uh, Kathy kind of stole my thunder. I was going to talk about how we uh, really got our money's worth out of that AS400 as long as it's been here. But also, uh, there were so many times where there was a problem to solve, and so somebody would go into the code and just create a custom solution, uh, which was amazing. Again, I know we've gotten a lot of good use out of that system, but then that also added uh, to the level of complexity in uh, trying to do this conversion. And I've been involved in con uh, implementations or conversions or whatever else. I know you have too, Lanny, uh, that were a fraction of a fraction of this level of complexity and just all the hours and all the process. And I'm just... Uh, humbled at the uh, the scope and the work that our people have done to uh, to make this happen it's incredible and I'm very excited to see it uh, finally come to fruition after all the time we've been talking about it so good job thank you thank you indeed other questions uh, I was Liz. just going to add one of our goals of this evening is we know how connected all of you are into the community um, have family members um, and also have teachers who come to you and we're really embracing the philosophy of we absolutely want to know you know so if somebody feels something that's not right if there's something that's not right we are expecting that to happen um, and we have a process in place that we want people to let us know because we're going to be working on this for months going into the new year um, to shore up for a long time whatever needs to be shored up um, so part of it was just helping all of you understand that we're expecting that we are expecting for people to say hey this doesn't seem like it's working quite right um, the appropriate response is absolutely make sure you follow the process let the district know they're going to keep working on it I appreciate you sharing that because my question was going to be could you one more time just say so if, if a teacher or staff member is having a problem with the system what should they do the, the very best thing uh, is to file, file a help desk ticket electronically. That way they get tracking on it so that they can see that. Um, they have some sense and we make sure that it's remediated and they, they can have timing that it took and all those sorts of things. It really helps us. Um, we're talking about how we're going to put a war room of people together so that as those are coming in, we can work very closely together to, uh, to mitigate any of those issues as quickly as possible. Okay. And then, so for parents, uh, and I know this is an internal system, but uh, for parents or anybody in the community that doesn't have access, to the help desk, who should they contact if they see a problem with the, the system that they're used to interfacing with? If I mean, anytime they have a anytime they have a problem like that, typically um, we're getting an increasing amount of traction on that with through Let's Talk. 
um, though it's coming in through there, which is actually very helpful for us. Um, coming back to school this year with, with the online enrollment for the first time, um, we've been getting a fair amount of traction uh, with that. Um, they can always call the district office, and, and Jean will very dutifully ask how, how she may serve them, and she typically gets them up to us very quickly. All right, thank you so much. Kathy? Along this same line, are you going to put together a list of FAQs, frequently asked questions, because it might save you some time if 400 people have the same issue, you get to work on it a whole lot faster than having 400 separate phone calls. And there is a there is a core website that, that's out there, and some of that has already has already been posted there, and we'll continue to do that. If there become hot topics where we're seeing that coming from a lot of people, then we'll start flashing some stuff out there and kind of pushing it. There's I always a, find it funny when you call it hot topics, because when my computer doesn't work, <laughs> hot is the only word I can think of. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So. Dr. Joel. Well, I, I just want to reiterate what um, what many of you said on the board, and that is that this has been just an incredible effort by a lot of folks. And I'm, I'm of the simple mind that, you know, when Kirk pulls those pieces apart and then pulls them back in, it ought to work, right? And it should be a 24-hour endeavor. But um, in working with these folks closely and with a lot of the folks that work with them, I know that this has put a lot of professional lives on hold. And it really hit home to me when I ran into a couple of um, members of uh, Dr. Stanisher's team kind of had their heads down, they were walking down the hall, and I said, where are you all headed? And they said, Kent, don't you know, this is the INFOR death march. They were getting ready to go in <laughs> to an INFOR meeting to, to work yet again on the enterprise system. So um, great job by everybody. Thank you. And I so appreciate um, these three, but also everybody in the system and understanding that this is going to be something that we're just going to have to grow into. And I think the message has been well stated and will be well received. And it won't be very long. We'll look back on it and say that wasn't so bad. Agreed. Thank you so much. Thank you. So my last item, as many of you know, we try to, uh, we, we have an executive retreat every year and we try to determine a theme and come up with some ideas. And this, this last year, I was given this a lot of thought. You, if you recall, we did car carpool karaoke. That was not one of my bucket list items. You know, singing, dancing just really isn't my thing. But I've always wanted to jump out of an airplane. So um, I, I want to thank the executive team for indulging me in, in my bucket list and also helping us weave a message of welcome. So Brian, if you would roll the tape. That'll be one viewer clear for takeoff. Roger that. Hey, thank you. Great to see everybody. Hope you had a wonderful summer. I know it's gone fast just like they always did. And I really appreciate the fact that we're going to kick off our planning year doing something that I've always wanted to do, and that is jump out of an airplane. Because I think us jumping and soaring is really going to set the stage for 2019, 2020. I know you're all a little nervous about it, but I've been assured it's going to work out very, very well. So let's talk about our priorities for this year. For me, two priorities. We generated those with the board. One, we've got to get ready for this facility plan execution. We've got a lot of, a lot of great opportunities in front of us to connect the community, and I think we're going to come up with a plan that will help the board come up with a plan that's going to make a lot of sense in, in January or February. Um, secondly, equity and accessibility. We're going to try to create some definition into to both of those. We know now as a high-performing district that uh, the vast majority of our kids are being successful, but we're still losing some. So it's going to really be incumbent upon us. How do we narrow that gap? So let's go around. John, what about you? What are your priorities? I'm really excited about jumping into the new year with our community partners on some really important initiatives. One of the most important are our three new community learning centers at Lincoln High Northeast and Randolph, added to our other 26 community learning centers. And those are really important for reaching equitable outcomes at all of our schools. And as always, we'll continue to collaborate with our elected officials all across the community and the area to reach efficiency and effectiveness. Thanks, Dr. Weber, what are you going to do? Yeah, really three kind of priorities. Uh, first, we've got that enterprise system that we're going to be implementing in the district, working with the business 
uh, business people to get that implemented. That's a huge thing for us in the district. Second, you know, recruiting for positions that are hard to fill. Um, trying to get more special education teachers, looking at those positions that support mental health, counselors, social workers, really trying to find more of those people to help support our students. And then uh, working on this equity goal on the HR side, trying to uh, recruit more diversity into our district. We want the demographics of our, of our staff to reflect the demographics of the city, and we got to keep working towards that goal. Thank you, Dr. Weber. Dr. Larson. Dr. Joel, we're going to have our radar focused in on effective teaching and learning practices so that every day in every classroom, every student has a positive experience so that we can achieve more equitable learning outcomes all across the district. Loving that, Dr. Stanish. Dr. Joel, we're going to bring a really exciting report to you as we soar into the start of the school year on August 27th at the board meeting. It's from the Superintendent's Facility Advisory Committee. They have a long list of needs related to facilities that will then jumpstart the conversations with the Board of Education this fall as we look to accomplish one of your goals. Secondly, we're working with HR to land a new business HR system for the school district. It's called INFOR, and that is a significant undertaking for the district, and we're excited about that. And our board has done amazing work this summer in preparing a budget for adoption. Um, it's a 3.3% budget growth, substantially investing in salary and benefits of our employees as the majority of the expense. So we're excited to soar into the new year. So a lot of great things on the docket, as always the case this time of the year. As we always say, we've got this wonderfully supportive community, we've got a tremendous board of education. We hire the most highly talented people to help us deliver. We've got great families, we've got wonderful kids. It really is time now to take that leap into the 2019-2020 school year. So thanks for being here. Let's go soar. Let's go. <clears throat> here we go. I don't know if this is such a good idea. You know, now it's this moment of truth. I'm really, really nervous. But they always say, go on two, count on three. One, two. Ah! I can't feel my arms. This is unbelievable. What a trip. We're sorry. Dr. Joel, you and your sturdy year shenanigans. Looks like we fell for it again. Dr. Joel, it's going to be an amazing year. We're holding hands. Who's pulling the cord? I know they would have given Jane a parachute. I think I'm getting the hang of this. What do you guys think? Guys? Guys? <laughs> well, I guess we're ready for a great year here at Lincoln Public Schools. A huge thank you to Duncan Aviation, to all our staff, students, and families. We're ready for 2019 2020. So we had a lot of fun doing that, and we'll distribute that uh, probably, I think, at the beginning of this next week, or during this week. But I do want to call out communications, and in particular, Doug Dickinson, who's an absolute magician when it comes to, to these kinds of things. So we had a lot of fun. We're going to have a great year, and, you know, it's time to get rolling. So that concludes my report. Thank you, Dr. Joel, and thank you for including me in the uh, back-to-school video. I had quite, a, quite a, f a lot of fun learning how to fly a plane. Uh, that brings us to our monthly financial report. Are there any questions? All right, seeing none, announcements of upcoming events for the board. On Friday, August 2nd at 7.30, we have the new teacher breakfast at Embassy Suites. On Wednesday, August 7th at 8 o'clock, we have the Chamber Coffee at the Chamber of Commerce. On Thursday, August 8th at 8.30, we have the Chamber Federal Legislative Summit in Ashland. Monday, August 12th, starts the first week of classes for the 2019-2020 school year. And our next board meeting is Tuesday, August 13th, 6 p.m., right here at LPSDO. That brings us to our second opportunity for public comment. Would anyone wishing to speak to the board please come forward now? 
Seeing none, I have no request for a closed session. Thank you all for attending. We are adjourned. <laughs>